So the other day I found a constructive proof that the square root of two is irrational. And I found this on Wikipedia. And generally math Wikipedia is pretty good. There aren't really that many problems or inconsistencies, but I found an inconsistency in this proof. And so I'd like to go over this proof, point out where the inconsistency is, and then see what this thing is really proving, which I think is maybe how far is the square root of two from being a rational number. Okay, so let's first look at this constructive proof from Wikipedia that the square root of two is irrational and see what's wrong with this constructive proof. So I'd like to start with the following observation. This observation is pretty clearly true, and that is that if we have the square root of two, it lies between um, one and one and a half. In other words, one and three halves. And why is that? Well, if we square all parts of this inequality, we get one is less than two, which is less than nine over four. Well, two is clearly equal to eight over four, which is less than nine over four. And then I think that we can accept that the square root function is an increasing function. So the truth of this inequality, which I've boxed in brown, clearly implies the truth of this inequality, which we are assuming. Okay, so now from there, what we want to do is take natural numbers, I'll call them A and B, such that the quotient of A over B is in the same range. So in other words, 1 is less than A over B, which is less than 3 over 2. So just to reiterate, we've got the square root of 2 in this range and a over b in this range. And we're not assuming anything about a and b except their quotient is between 1 and 1 and a half. And then here's where the proof is a bit sketchy. So the proof says this. So since a squared is not equal to 2b squared, we have the absolute value of 2b squared minus a squared is bigger than or equal to 1. So I will agree that if a squared is not equal to 2b squared, then, in fact, this is definitely true. Because if these are not equal, then the absolute value of their difference has to be bigger than or equal to 1, given that the absolute value of their difference is a whole number or an integer value by this thing up here. So what's the problem here? Well, we're assuming that a squared is not equal to 2b squared. And in the proof, they say that this is most definitely true because 2 divides into the left-hand side of this equation an even number of times, whereas 2 divides into the right-hand side of this equation an odd number of times. And thus, uh, those cannot be equal things. But let's also note that this statement, that a squared is not equal to 2b squared, is equivalent to a squared over b squared is not equal to 2, which is in turn equivalent to saying that a over b is not equal to the square root of 2. So I think that we found a bit of a um, circular argument here. So if our goal in the end is to prove that the square root of 2 is irrational, then we cannot assume that the square root of 2 is irrational like all along the way, but that's exactly what we just did. Notice that a and b were any natural numbers between 1 and 3 halves, and we just showed that the quotient of any rational number that's between 1 and 3 halves cannot be equal to the square root of 2, so that doesn't logically lead us to prove that the square root of 2 is irrational. Okay, so that being said, even though we found a problem of circularity in this proof argument, Let's see what we could get out of this proof argument if we take this as a fact. So in other words, we're taking as a fact that the square root of 2 is irrational, which you can prove a bunch of different ways. 
And instead of this being a proof that the square root of 2 is not rational, maybe what we're doing here is answering this question. How far is the square root of 2 from being rational, assuming that it's already irrational? Okay, so anyway, let's see what we can do with some inequalities now. So we have the absolute value of the square root of 2 minus a over b is the same thing as the absolute value of the square root of 2 minus a over b multiplied in the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 2 plus a over b. So here we have square root of 2 plus a over b in the numerator and the denominator. I put it in absolute values in the numerator just so that it interacts with this numerator nicely, but I, I, don't, I don't need them, so I left them out of the denominator. Okay, so let's note that by difference of squares multiplication, we get that this is equal to 2 minus a squared over b squared in the numerator. Then in the denominator, we have the square root of 2 plus a over b. So we have something that looks like that. And now where can we go from here? Well, I think maybe the most logical thing to do will be to multiply by b squared so we have something that looks like this. So multiplying by b squared will give us 2b squared minus a squared, I lost my absolute values in the numerator, over b squared times the square root of 2 plus a over b. So we have something like this. But let's note that this guy right here can be applied to the numerator right here. And we see the numerator is uh, <clears throat> bigger than or equal to 1. But what can we do with the denominator? Well, since the square root of 2 is between 1 and 3 halves, and a over b is between 1 and 3 halves, that tells us that 2 is less than the square root of 2 plus a over b, which is less than 3. But then reciprocating this inequality will give us a half on this side, which is the largest, a third on this side, which will be the smallest, and then a 1 over the square root of 2 times plus a over b. Meaning that like we can replace this numerator with 1 and produce an inequality, we can replace this denominator by 3 times b squared and get any inequality. So this whole object is bigger than or equal to 1 over 3b squared, which is bigger than 0. So what we end up with is the square root of 2 minus a over b cannot be equal to 0 because its absolute value is larger than 0. And in the Wikipedia page, that is said to show that the square root of 2 is irrational. But I think we've already gone over the fact that we implicitly assume that the square root of 2 is irrational along the way. But what we did find out is this like nice bound, which is given by maybe this inequality here underlined in pink that bounds the square root of 2 away from a rational number with a certain denominator. So in fact, it bounds it away from rational numbers with the denominator of b by 1 over 3b squared. And I think that in itself is pretty interesting. And that's a good place to stop. Music